Hello, my name is Rose Riley, and I'm a member of the League of Women Voters of Washtenaw County. Welcome to our online candidate forum for the November 8th general election. The League is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization that promotes voter education and participation, and we host candidate forums to help voters make informed choices. Now, let's hear from the candidates. Good evening. My name is Dee Deshaun, and I'm the moderator for this forum tonight. It is my honor to introduce one of the two candidates running in the November general election for Washtenaw County Board of Commissioners, District 7, Democrat Andy LaVar. The other candidate, Republican Jonathan Smart, did not respond to numerous invitations to participate in this forum. So thank you, sir, for participating in this forum. And Mr. Labar, it's time for your opening statement. Uh, Dee, thanks so much uh, for hosting tonight. And a big thank you to League of Women Voters for uh, the role you play, not just here locally, but throughout our democracy across the country. My name is Andy Labar. I have the uh, privilege, honor, and responsibility of serving as the county commissioner for the seventh district of Washington County. Uh, that is basically the east side of the city of Ann Arbor proper. Uh, I've had that honor uh, since my first election in 2012. I began serving in 2013. I uh, have served in the four leadership positions on the board chair, vice chair, working session chair, and ways and means chair. Um, human services tend to be the largest area of focus that I have at the Board of Commissioners table, but all issues are important. And most important to me is being a representative voice of my constituents. So thank you for having me here with you tonight. Thank you, Mr. Labar. So let's go to the questions. Question number one has to do with the use of federal funds. Washtenaw County will receive more than $70 million in federal American Rescue Plan funds. In July, the University of Michigan's Poverty Solutions Center evaluated Washtenaw County's use of these funds. The U of M report recommended that the county prioritize adequate one-time investments in a limited number of initiatives, rather than spreading funding too thinly among multiple programs. The report also recommended a focus on achieving specific measurable goals. Is the county spending ARPA funds as recommended by the U of M report? I think the county is spending our ARPA funds uh, in a way that parallels much of what the U of M report points to, uh, both in terms of how we spend it, but also in terms of the one-time basis. A lot of our focus has been obviously in response to uh, COVID, but most particularly in terms of those areas of acute need, those have primarily been 4197 and 98 zip codes, um, and trying to ameliorate some of the economic conditions that existed pre-COVID uh, that, that have led to a, an unfortunately disparate set of, of human outcomes throughout the county. We are trying our best with those ARPA dollars to use them in a way that is transformative, uh, but is not long-term in terms of its commitment, because those are one-time dollars. I, I, I think we will have, uh, when it's all said and done, and all $70 million has been spent, uh, much in tandem with the U of M recommendations, uh, not, word, not word for word, uh, but, but not far apart. Thank you, Mr. Labar. Now for question number two, the topic is safe drinking water. Two chemical spills, PFAs and Chrome 6, have endangered drinking water in the county. What steps should the Board of Commissioners take to ensure safe drinking water for county residents? The, the board has to work in tandem, particularly with, with two entities. One is the Water Resources Commissioner, uh, Evan Pratt in our case, and two is the county's public health department. Uh, that is ably run by our, our director, Jimena Lovelock, and, and, and her staff. Uh, those two offices inform us in terms of 
uh, the science and the process as it relates to water. Uh, but we certainly have to work with our municipal partners. The biggest thing we can do right now is communicate exactly what the data is showing, uh, communicate to the extent possible what legal steps we have taken or plan to take, and be ready, frankly, as a county, both a community and a, a, a unit of government uh, to advocate for any and all resources and legal changes at the state level uh, that we need to respond to any threat to our water system. Uh, we recently saw a, a, a leak that unfortunately got into the Huron River um, with, from the Tribar plant. Thankfully, it was not as big as, uh, as, as, as first feared, um, but that threat never goes away. Uh, and as long as water remains a vital component of human life, it will be uh, one of the county's duties to do everything we can uh, to protect it. Um, so communication uh, is, is key and working in coordination with various offices and entities uh, that, that deal with water quality, particularly City of Ann Arbor, uh, Environmental Protection Agency, uh, and the, the State Level Protection Agency, uh, those will remain vital things, and we've done that, and we'll continue to do that and try and make progress as, uh, however we can. Thank you, Mr. Labar. And moving right along to the third question, the topic is election fairness. Do you believe that Washtenaw County operates free and fair elections? What additional steps, if any, should be taken to secure election processes and ensure public confidence in elections? Washtenaw County runs uh, fantastic, clean, and credible elections in every sense of the word. We are fortunate uh, to have such wonderfully proficient technical staff uh, in the clerk's office who ensure that we, impl we, we uh, comply with not just the letter of the law, but also the spirit. Uh, we are fortunate right now to have in the state of Michigan, a Secretary of State, Secretary of State Benson, uh, who is also committed not just to the, you know, the, the, the machinery of elections, uh, but the intent and, and purpose uh, as it relates to our democracy. What we need is action at the federal level to ensure uh, that state legislatures like ours here in Michigan that are largely elected in primaries uh, and, and, and that many times do not represent the majority will of the voters, that they are not allowed, uh, frankly, to legislate uh, our small d democracy out of existence. Um, that's a fear that's been brought to the fore for most Americans recently, uh, but in states throughout the nation, uh, you know, ha ha has been an issue going on in the, in the background, uh, sadly, for decades. Um, I have no doubt in the fidelity of elections here in Washtenaw County. Uh, as long as we have people running and in the Michigan legislature who refuse to even uh, concede the legitimacy uh, of a national election we just had with a difference of 7 million votes, uh, then I fear that Lansing will always be looking uh, to take away rights and to make it harder for every person uh, to exercise their franchise. Thank you, Mr. Labar. And the next question, the topic is after effects of COVID-19. The COVID pandemic disproportionately affected Washtenaw County's least privileged citizens, especially those living in zip codes 48197 and 48198. Are there additional steps the county should take to address the effects, effects of COVID on these residents? Yes, we need to continue to ensure uh, that any and all public health resources are deployed and available uh, in those two zip codes particularly. We need to ensure that our other human service departments, primarily uh, mental health and community economic development also have uh, those resources available for those jurisdictions. I think the, the key coming out of COVID will be to address not just the effects, but to try and impact the underlying conditions uh, that multiplied the negative effects in those communities from COVID. 
primarily those relate to economic opportunity, educational attainment, uh, and basic life measures in terms of length of life and, and, and other uh, demographic data. The, the, the simple truth is Washtenaw County sadly remains bifurcated in terms of many different demographic measures, and it, it tends to split along those 4.198.97 lines and the rest of the county. We're making some progress on these issues as we provide more robust funding and resources for our human services, uh, but many of those, even when they're proactive, are, are, are still reactive to conditions that exist in the community. I think we'll make some headway with the work of our racial equity officer in terms of looking on, on, on the front end of county policy uh, for how our actions will impact uh, issues of equity, particularly racial and economic. Um, but there's more work to do, and it's work that will not stop uh, as, as, as COVID falls sort of off the front page and, 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 and you know onto the back. Um, that's work that I've been fortunate to have a role in for a decade now, uh, but it will be decades in terms of our commitment to continue to address it. Thank you, sir. And now, Mr. Labar, for the last question. It has to do with county worker pay. Recently, some Washtenaw County employees were on strike demanding higher wages. A 2020 compensation study for the county found that county worker pay lagged 7 to 12 percent behind market wages. What should be done by the Board of Commissioners to address this issue, and how would you pay for it? We are implementing the MAG study's recommendations uh, to try and increase worker pay across the board, both unionized and non-unionized. The, the simple truth is, as long as Washtenaw County remains a creature of state government, which counties in Michigan are, we are somewhat limited uh, just by virtue of the way this state produces revenue uh, and, and allows counties to spend it. With that said, uh, we have and will continue to work with our partners in labor uh, to get as much as we possibly can in terms of not just Pay, but also conditions generally of employment um, that, that, that are not just satisfactory, but hopefully optimal. Uh, we do have a great deal of competition with entities like University of Michigan, City of Ann Arbor, uh, related uh, other counties and, and municipal governments. And it's, it's true that Washtenaw County uh, has not been a leader of the pack lately. I think there's progress on that. It will continue to be made. And I think one other thing is many of the areas where county government interacts with societal forces, places like mental health, uh, we are finally getting some help from the state. We were able to get uh, retention and hiring bonuses uh, for our CMH, our, our community mental health department. Um, those are good steps, but we need to do more. One of the biggest things that I would advocate we and any other uh, member of the citizen do is talk to your state legislatures about the structural fixes we need in state government that impact county funding. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, we are dependent on tax revenue uh, that uses an outdated, in many ways, uh, improper system. Uh, so we're somewhat limited in how we can address this challenge. Thank you, Mr. Labar. Thank you for responding to our questions. And now it's time for your closing statement. Well, just once again, I wanna thank the League of Women Voters for all they do. Um, county government is not, uh, it is not uh, exciting. It is not uh, one that sort of has visceral appeal. It is in many ways uh, the quiet, dignified work that goes on in the background of a civil society. We provide services that impact human beings uh, throughout the span of their lives, but most often uh, in those moments where they're in their, 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 their moment of greatest need. Uh, it is a passion to me that this community 
care so much about uh, the, the, the members within it and the human services that serve them. As long as I am uh, Washtenaw County Commissioner, I will do everything and anything in my power to make sure uh, that we have the most robust, adept, and adaptable set of human services possible that we can offer our citizenry. Um, I look forward to the term ahead, should I be reelected. I appreciate uh, the chance to serve uh, as in terms past. Uh, and I hope anytime any citizen here in Washington County, any resident, anyone has a question, uh, they will reach out to me, email, cell phone, Twitter, you name it. Thank you again to the League for having me. Thank you, Mr. Labar, and thank you for participating in this valuable session. The League thanks the candidates and volunteers who participated in tonight's forum and community members who submitted questions. Please urge others to view our forums. Most importantly, please vote in the November 8th general elections, either by absentee ballot or in person.